Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hot Topics, where today we are going to discuss the following question. Once saved, always saved? This is a hot topic because there are many questions regarding this topic of salvation. Is a person who has once been saved, is that person always saved? What are your thoughts? Well, be careful <laughs> before you answer too quickly. Because the answer is, well, once saved, always saved? Yes. But maybe no. Thanks, Andrew. You've now completely confused me. <laughs> well, <laughs> as you remain in your state of confusion just for a few moments, let me give you a quick update. Again, as you can see with our background, we are still here in Croatia serving the Roma Gypsies. In fact, today uh, we just returned back from serving two villages. And today was the day where we passed out um, uh, clothing to the villages we fed the villages uh, we had a great time uh, teaching them the bible singing songs with them playing games uh, today for, uh, the two villages we just came back from this is going to be the last time that this particular missions team goes to these two villages so it was kind of an emotional goodbye for all the students as they were saying goodbye to the children that they've formed tremendous relationships with the children who were crying also uh, it, it was a touching scene. Um, so we uh, uh, finished, like I said, in these two villages. By the way, the, the weather, Croatia, has been phenomenal this week, right? If you, if you recall, if you've been following us over the last month or two, I've been saying how brutally hot it's been, and it has been. But uh, by God's grace, <laughs> I prayed the weather, you know, to, you know to, to be able to get cooler. No, I didn't do that. But uh, it, it, suddenly we, we had a kind of like a, a cool front where it's uh, in the low 70s. There's a nice breeze. The sun's out. It has been phenomenal this week. And, it, and it's just amazing the energy. I know for me, especially as I'm getting older, boy, I tell you, I, I've had a lot of energy this week just because of the coolness in the weather as compared to the last month or so where it has just been oh, draining. Um, but either way, it's been a joy to, to serve the, the Gypsy students. We're taking the, our mission team students down on a mini retreat for the weekend. We'll let them see some of the Croatian coast. We'll be back up Sunday for church, and then the next week we will be uh, ministering in two other villages. And uh, after that, the team, as well as Danielle and I, are flying back to the States, <laughs> where I don't want to talk to anybody for a month. I just want to rest and recover in my own bed, eating from my own refrigerator, and enjoying our air conditioning. So that's the update here in Croatia, let's get to the topic at hand. Once saved, are you always saved? Well, on the one hand, yes. Jesus makes that very clear. Let's see, John chapter 10. Jesus says in verse 27, My sheep hear my voice. By the way, Jesus died for the sheep. He says that in verse 11, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Again, in verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. How do we hear the voice of Christ? Through the word of Christ, right? Jesus says, My, vo my sheep hear my voice. You're able to understand the scriptures. The Holy Spirit who has regenerated you illuminates your mind to be able to understand the mind of Christ, so the voice of Christ, the scriptures, right? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. That's very important right there. They follow me. Because he's the shepherd. And I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. In other words, you can't lose your salvation. 
Jesus says, um, no one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me, doctrine of election, is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. One in being, in essence. Three persons. So we see very clearly here, Jesus says, I give eternal life to my sheep. Jesus also said that they will never perish. No one can snatch one of Jesus' sheep out of his hand, right? Or out of the Father's hand. So, once saved, always saved? Yeah. Jesus gives you the gift of eternal life. And Jesus secures, guarantees you have life eternal. Chapter 6, he says the same thing. Verse 37, he says, All that the Father gives me, doctrine of election, will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. Verse 39, this is the will of him, the Father who sent me the Son, that of all that he has given me, I lose none. Can't lose your salvation. You don't choose your salvation. God chooses you. You don't lose your salvation. God secures you. Praise God, right? Again, Paul says the same thing in Romans chapter 8. Love this. Again, talking about salvation. In verse 38 and 39, for I'm convinced, Paul says, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing. I guess that encompasses everything. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So throughout Scripture, we do see this doctrine of security of salvation. Once saved by God's grace, always saved by God's grace. Again, you didn't choose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. You're chosen by God. You are secured by God. And you will be with God throughout eternity. And that's great news, isn't it? For those who are truly saved. What do you mean, Andrew? Well, staying in Romans 8... The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, makes a great point about believers. He says in verse 14, all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Do you see what Paul's saying there? All who are led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity. By the way, where does he lead you? Towards holiness or towards sinfulness? Towards obedience or towards disobedience? Towards godliness or towards ungodliness? Where does the Holy Spirit lead you? All who are led by the Holy Spirit, those are the sons of God. Those are people who are truly saved, right? So, one of the ways that you can be assured of your salvation is you have to look at your life. Is my life manifesting evidence that I'm being led by the Holy Spirit? And are you bearing fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Because those who are truly saved, listen very carefully, will, will, will be led by the Spirit of God. Again, I ask you, is it going to lead you to holiness 
or unholiness? Is he going to lead you to godliness or ungodliness? Is he going to lead you to obedience or disobedience? Let me ask you a question. Do you see evidence in your life that the Holy Spirit is leading you? And if your answer is, yes, I see that evidence, well, that tells you you're saved, right? Because you're chosen before the foundation of time by God. You were redeemed at the cross by Christ 2,000 years ago. You're regenerated by God, the Holy Spirit, who gives you the gift of faith to be able to repent of your sins and place your trust in Christ alone. Because Jesus said, all who the Father gives me will come to me. The Holy Spirit seals you, securing, guaranteeing your salvation. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. Your body is the temple of the living God. And the Holy Spirit leads you towards Christ's likeness. And so if you see evidence of being led by the Holy Spirit, for instance, do you have a desire to read the Holy Scriptures? Also, do you have a desire not only to hear the voice of Christ, do you have the ability to understand the voice of Christ, and do you follow Christ? Remember in John 10, Jesus said, I know my sheep, I give them eternal life, they know me, and they follow me. And how do they follow Christ? They're led by the Spirit of Christ. To be obedient to Christ, not to earn your salvation but as evidence that you're truly saved, right? Your desire to obey Christ is not the root of your salvation. It is the fruit of your salvation. And that's what Paul says here. You want to know who's a true follower of Christ? Those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So to our hot topic question, once saved, always saved. Well, yes and no. Those who have been truly, truly saved, they are truly, truly always saved. No one can snatch them out of Christ's hand. No one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. But just because a person goes forward on an altar call does not mean that person is truly saved. Just because a person raises his hand or stands up or fills out a card and says, okay, today I chose, doesn't mean that that person is truly saved. There is a lot of lip service going on in Christianity today. Oh, yeah, 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 I believe in Jesus. Yet they demonstrate no evidence, manifest no evidence that they're being led by the Spirit of God. Well, guess what? Paul goes on to say, back in the same chapter 8, verse 9, he says, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ in him, he does not belong to Christ. He's not saved. Right? So, the altar call doesn't save you. The Holy Spirit's going to regenerate you. Filling out a card doesn't save you. It's the Holy Spirit who regenerates you. Raising your hand and saying, okay, I, I believe in Jesus. That doesn't save you. The Spirit of Christ saves you. Well, how do I know I'm saved? Well, objectively, you can know you're saved because you believe the truth of Scripture that we are wretched sinners on a highway to hell, and we have no chance through our own efforts of saving ourselves. But God is a God of love. and His love, He raised up a substitute, His beloved Son, God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, who would be punished in our place for our sins. Jesus Christ, the perfect God-man, perfectly fulfilled righteousness for us in our place, and then He went to the cross, and as He hung there, our sins were placed on Him. He was punished with the wrath that we deserve. He died the death we deserve, but three days later, He rose in victory, paying for our sins in full in terms of that day of judgment. 
But it's not enough just to have head knowledge on that. It's not enough just to have heart knowledge in that. There must be a submission of your will to Christ. Well, how does that happen? Not through our efforts. The Holy Spirit has to make you alive. He regenerates you, gives you the gift of faith so that you are able now to rec recognize that you're a wretched sinner and to be able to repent of your sins and to place your faith and trust in Christ alone. And a person who's been chosen by God before the foundation of time, redeemed by Christ at the cross 2,000 years ago, regenerated by God the Holy Spirit, a person like that is truly saved. And that person is always saved. And that person can know he or she is saved objectively because they believe the truth of God in the word of God. Second of all, they can know they're saved because they have subjective evidence. They see that the Holy Spirit is leading them and they are producing fruit of the Spirit. They have a desire for God's Word. They have a desire to worship God. They have a desire to submit to God. They have a desire to serve God. They have a desire to sacrifice for God. They have a desire to follow and humble themselves before God. No matter how challenging it is to them and difficult to them, they have a desire for the things of God. Those people and those people alone are once saved, always saved. But those people who simply give lip service to Jesus, oh, I believe in Jesus, yet they're not being led by the Spirit of God, which tells you they don't have the Spirit of God in them. Those people may think they've once been saved, but because they're not saved, they're not always saved. They've never been saved. D do you see it? You see why I said, well, yes to the answer? Once saved, always saved? Yes, for a person who's truly saved. But no, for a person who's been just giving lip service. Who's playing the game. But Andrew, who are you to judge? I'm not judging anybody. I'm just simply stating what Scripture says. Those who are led by the Spirit of Christ, those are sons of God, right? I mean, <laughs> Jesus gives a stern warning. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. Um, <laughs> right after Jesus preaches this most incredible sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, he starts to bring this sermon to a conclusion. And boy, does he challenge the religious people. And Jesus says in Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. He's not talking work salvation here. He's simply saying, the will of the Father is to submit to Christ alone for salvation. To understand you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Also, the will of the Father is to be led by the Spirit of Christ, to live for Christ, to bear fruit for Christ, all for the glory of Christ, right? But Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, he's talking about religious people here. Some people, he's talking about people who sound like they're biblically orthodox. They're calling Jesus Lord. In fact, they're calling him Lord twice. They're emphatic, Lord, Lord. Jesus says, not everyone who calls me that will enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, many will say to me on that day. What day? Judgment day, which tells you he's the judge, right? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, here they are. They're orthodox, they're emphatic, they're excited. Lord, Lord! Did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name did we not cast out demons? And in your name did we not perform many miracles? Look what we did for you to...
to prove to you that we're worthy. Now you owe us. Open the doors of heaven. Uh-uh. Jesus said, didn't I, didn't I go forward on an altar call in your name? Jesus said, didn't I stand up and raise my hand in your name? Jesus said, I do this. Ah, Jesus said, um, I will declare to these people, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Do you see it? Those who are led by the Spirit of Christ will not practice lawlessness. So we see here, these are people, they played a game. Lord, Lord. But they were never truly saved. Therefore, they're not always saved because they were never saved. You see it? And again, he's talking about religious people here. Churchgoers. Lord, Lord. So once saved, always saved? Well, yeah. If you've been truly saved. <laughs> You're always saved. Praise God. Once saved, always saved? you're part of this group here if you're not being led by the spirit of christ nope in fact john chapter 2 <laughs> Joe, you want to talk about a, a very sobering passage um, well, matthew 7 was pretty sobering too what do you think Dave? <laughs> very sobering huh <laughs> you're speechless aren't you <laughs> yes <laughs> john chapter 2 jesus uh is there in, in Jerusalem. He had just cleansed the temple for his first time. He's going to do it a second time at the end of his earthly ministry before he went to the cross. And he stayed in Jerusalem after cleansing the temple. And we're told in John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, now when he, Jesus, was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name. Why? Because they truly repented of their sins and place their faith and trust in Christ alone day on, you're shaking your head. Well, what's the answer? No, no. no. Well, they believed in his name. Why? Because they saw the signs he was doing. Well, Andrew, how do you know that they weren't truly saved? Well, we see. Verse 24. But Jesus, on his part, did not believe in them. You see it? They believe in him. But Jesus did not entrust himself to them. He did not believe in their belief of him. <laughs> and by the way, it's a lot more important what Jesus believes <laughs> about you than what you believe about him, right? And again, because Jesus knows all men. And because he did not need anyone to testify concerning man, for he himself knew what was in a man. That's why I say it's a lot more important what Jesus believes about you than what you believe about him. Because you and I can deceive ourselves into thinking, okay, pray to prayer, I'm fine. <laughs> right? <laughs> I believe in him. Uh, does he believe in what you believe about him? Does he believe in you? And so again, You've got a group of people here. Well, we believe in Jesus. Maybe even thinking they're saved. Maybe you're thinking they're okay with God. Uh-uh. No. And that's very sobering. And my concern is, is that churches today are filled with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who believe that they're saved. But Jesus doesn't believe in them. And he knows they're not saved. Once saved, always saved. If you're truly saved. Yeah. Once saved, always saved. Just because you prayed a prayer one time to Jesus. Because you went forward on an altar call. Because you signed a card for saying you're saved. You raised your hand. 
you decide it's time to clean up your life and become a more moral person. Once saved, always saved? No. Why? Because you've never been saved. And again, there are so many churchgoers today who are deceived. And many, in fact, who are actually thinking they can deceive Jesus. I said a prayer to you. That gives me my fire insurance. I don't go to hell. I'm going to go to heaven. But Jesus, while I'm down here on earth, stay out of my way. It's my life. It's my will. It's my desire. It's my desires. Jesus, I'll check you out when when I come to heaven. But until then, leave me alone. Stay out of my life. But I'm okay. I'm once saved. I pray to Jesus. I'm always saved because I know the Bible says that. The problem with that person He or she was never saved. And so that's why scripture tells us to examine ourselves to make sure we're in the faith, right? Better now to search the scriptures, to wrestle with the scriptures, to pray to the Holy Spirit to enlighten you to the scriptures, to examine yourself, to put yourself under the penetrating, powerful, pure word of God. And let the sword of the Lord, his holy word, just search every nook and cranny of you. To make sure that you are truly one of our Lord's saved sheep. You know, a message like this today might seem harsh. May seem judgmental. I challenge you, if that's what you're thinking, go read some of the sermons from the Reformers. (laughs) The Puritans. Sermons from the great Charles Spurgeon. Modern day phenomenal preachers, Dr. R.C. Sproul who's gone home to be with the Lord, Dr. John MacArthur, Dr. Steve Lawson, Dr. Al Mohler, Paul Washer, we need more hard-hitting biblical messages today than ever before. See, the reformers, they brought the truth. And they pounded the truth into people. Because they didn't want people living in self-deceived salvations. That's what the Puritans did. Spurgeon, great men who I just mentioned. And I don't put myself anywhere near (laughs) the category of these great preachers. But I do feel obligated and compelled as a pastor. In fact, it's my calling to confront people with the truth. It's not my truth. It's the truth of God. And to confront people with the truth so that they are not living in self-deceived salvation land. The good news is this, once saved, if you're truly saved, you're once saved, you're always saved, praise God. But for those who think, well, I just prayed a prayer, I'm once saved, I'm always saved, ugh. 
They're not being led by the Spirit of Christ? No. But have they lost their salvation? No, they never had it. And so, as I conclude, for some of us, we know people in our families who are living in self-deceived salvation land. <laughs> May God grant all of us the faithfulness to be bold enough to give them the truth. That's why you should love. That's why you should love your loved ones. To give them the truth, so they're not deceived, and so they're not part of that group on that day. He's like, Lord, Lord. And he says, I never knew you. So may God give all of us the boldness to be able to do it. And the second group is, maybe as you're listening to this, you're going, huh, I never really thought about my salvation. I just kind of took it for granted. Ugh. Time to think. Time to examine. To make sure you're in the faith. And may God do His work in and through your life so that you can be secure in your salvation so that you can say without a shadow of a doubt, I'm once saved and I'm always saved. Amen.